What's up, everybody? It's the Digital World Podcast, and we got a lot to talk about today. There's a lot of scenarios happening out there, and it's all taking shape, so stay tuned. Um, here, we see that XRP wick down to $0.32 cents on Poloniex. That is a massive drop. You know, you see here from $1.39 all the way to $0.32, cents. that is some crazy wick. That happened so be careful out there if you're using leverage be careful you could get liquidated this is this is not a, a, a game it's very serious so be careful with your money leverage is very or highly highly dangerous so be careful with that but yeah that's interesting to see that it worked all the way down to 32 cents that is crazy now and that's what's funny by XRP Crypto Wolf. He said, everyone thought the bull run would be about utility. We were completely wrong and ended up being a joke full of memes outperforming fundamentally strong coins. Now, obviously we see, and this transitions into what I Am Legion says um, about Doge. He says, this period will be remembered in hindsight as a dot com era 2.0 when the market cap went from 360 billion to 2.4 trillion in seven months roughly and animal and food names dominated the market picture and he's absolutely right like you know the pets.com of the dot com boom is 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 essentially what doge is today literally and that's what we're going to remember we're going to remember shibu all these dog coins like you see shiba coin is trending um yeah, it, it, it's just unbelievable. No utility, no use cases, just a complete joke. And, you know, I think this is really uh, true that, you know, back in 2011, people would have probably say, can you believe banks charge you $25 to wire? That is a scam. And <laughs> today they're saying $350 for gas. That's this currency is the future. And so... Uh, I just find it hilarious how, you know, shift of sentiment, you know, they're willing to pay a lot more for that. But, I mean, uh, with due respect, we know that digital assets will run the the future of the global financial system and all the, the protocols that are needed to, um, uh, you know, solve different use cases so, yeah, we know that that's where it's heading. Now, we see this narrative starting to play out strongly for the digital U.S. dollar. And we see here that DJ Peter Voss says the central bank's digital currency is the next big financial disruptor. And we know that it is. And it's coming and it's fast approaching. We know that the U.S. is going to pilot their U.S. digital dollar um, this coming July, and MIT is is helping with that. We also know that uh, Christopher Giancarlo, he said that um, there's going to be five CBDC pilots happening that are going to launch. So this is this is all happening in a matter of you know a few months, and you know once they launch that, you know you can expect it to be implemented you know very soon within the year, a year, two years, who knows, but it's not going to take all the way until 2024 or 2025, you know? So it's it's fast approaching, but you, you got to keep your eyes open and ears open as well to, to any kind of results, but it's coming. And here, um, Christopher Giancarlo said, he, the former head of the CFTC, that the Fed needs to wake up to the need for a digital dollar. So he's he's pushing the narrative. He's helping uh, push the digital dollar. And of course, he he was uh, he's been involved with the uh, digital dollar project, and so he he understands uh, the need for it. But I, I tell you, and we've discussed this before on this channel. That a digital dollar, a CBDC, would give the Federal Reserve the ultimate control. 
So while it may facilitate a lot of things, it's going to give you less power. And they'll be able to trace every single transaction you make. They'll be able to funnel um, funds directly to any entity that they see fit. So it just becomes a very, very, uh, let's see, dangerous pitfall or, or, or it becomes a very sketchy situation. If, if banks, if you, if you already thought banks had a lot of control and power or central banks, this would give them even more the ultimate power. And so it's a dicey situation to say the least. However, we see here that the, the power of ODL, the power of using XRP is so great. It will create lots of profits for a company. For example, MoneyGram's former head of innovation um, from February of 2018 to February of 2021 said that they built a settlement solution using uh Ripple XRP, and they generated an average of two million dollars per week in revenue. Now that talk about use case and utility and bringing it to the market. Now that's what that looks like. And here, Attorney Seal said that XRP Ripple's XRP sales hit 150 million dollars in quarter one of 2021. Versus $76 million in quarter four of 2020. That's an increase of 97%. And um, they attribute this to its ODL service. Now, we know they've been signing more and more clients, even despite the lawsuit. So that just speaks volumes to the utility that that digital asset has um, and, and, and the power to... Uh, create frictionless, a frictionless environment for cross-border payments. And so that is a sight to see. Now, I'm going to get into a little bit of speculation here, which who knows if it's speculation because we see it happening. But check this out. User reports indicate problems at AT&T. So we can see outages um, within the last 24 hours, and they definitely spiked. And we can see all the times that it happened. Uh, and so we know the outages had some kind of, uh, uh, not blackout, but they, they had like a, a outage. So, and we see Bank of America, we see a lot of things. We were seeing a lot of uh, outages. We know there was a cyber attack on the Colonial Pipeline. That stems from Texas all the way to New Jersey. It's about 5,000 miles in length. And they're still, I believe they might still be closed. Their operations might still be closed. So the East Coast um, it depends on 45% of its fuel from this colonial pipeline. And so if, you know, they're not up and running soon, they can see an increase in gas prices. So that is a scary scenario where a cyber attack can literally bring everything to a screeching halt. And speaking about a screeching halt, none other than Klaus Schwab, the man of the hour. And so, and I, the World Economic Forum tells you things before they even happen. Here we see, he says, a comprehensive cyber attack would bring to a complete halt to the power supply transportation, hospital services, and the, the black swan event would be a small disturbance in comparison to a major cyber attack. Now, if you don't believe me that that's what he said, let me just show you the video. And you can see for yourself what he's saying. And We all know that watch. still pay insufficient attention to the frightening scenario of a comprehensive cyber attack, which would bring to a complete halt to the power supply, transportation, hospital services, our society as a whole. The COVID-19 crisis would be seen in this respect as a small disturbance in comparison. 
to a major cyber attack, to use the COVID-19 crisis as a timely opportunity to reflect on the lessons the cybersecurity community can draw and improve our preparedness for a potential cyber pandemic. And there you have it. You see exactly what he's, he's, he's basically trying to point out. A cyber attack would be more detrimental to us, he says, that the Black Swan event would seem like a small disturbance. And a perfect example is, look at the Colonial Pipeline. They're still shut down. And the consequences of that would be are massive, especially for the East Coast. So keep your head on the swivel and know that, that a comprehensive cyber attack, if you want to um, have a great reset, the way to do it is through a major cyber attack where everything goes offline. And out of that, out of those ashes, you rise with your new system. I'm telling you, it's a frightening scenario, but you got to make sure we attack these things head on and, and, and realize the situation of what's actually happening. Hope this episode has brought you some value. Like and subscribe. Comment below. What are your thoughts on all of what's happening? This is the Digital World Podcast, and I'll see you in the next episode.